Good afternoon, Rich Ness, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, here for my weekly chat with my friend Ray Zinn. Ray is a podcaster, he's a speaker, he's an author, and he ran my crawl for 37 years. Hello, Ray. Hi, Rich. How's the weather? The weather could be better, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, you and I are in the same weather conditions. Uh, you know, I'm in Montana right now, and, and it's quite cold and, uh, and uh, very snowy. Yep, I hear you, I hear you. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about um, two different strategies for product development, and product development might not be the right word, but you, you often find that there are companies who, who do very leading-edge products where their margins are higher but their volumes are lower. And then there's other companies who want to be in a really high volume business where they make their money by selling lots of stuff, but, but the margins are lower. Um, you are certainly in that game, and you know how to play both sides of that. Um, is there a right way, a wrong way, a good strategy, a bad strategy? You know, if, if, if you're advising somebody, which of those camps would you tell somebody that they should be in? Well, it depends upon what uh, your your long-term objectives are for your company. Uh, At Micrell, um, I wanted to be an enduring company. We lasted 37 years, which is not bad for in my industry. I think we're one of the longest uh, sustained uh, semiconductor companies in the industry. Um, But we had to do that with a broad customer base and and with a lot lot of different products. Uh, If you're narrow, if you have a very narrow market, um, I, I know of a company that uh, um, was a high runner uh, that was called, called ESS back, you know, uh, uh, 15, 20 years ago. They made these sound chips for um, uh, for uh, uh, computers, speaker systems, and that sort of thing. And um, they grew like crazy. In other words, they had a fantastic run, and then uh, Taiwan knocked them off, and uh, and and they went from being a high roller to a low roller, and uh, they're still existing today, but a shell of what they used to be. Uh, because when you bet the farm on one technology or one, one product area, one market, uh, if that market you know, shrinks or, or you get uh, uh, displaced, uh, you're in trouble. So I didn't want that. I wanted a more stable um, company, a company that was profitable and, and also had a, a good sustainability. And, and Mike Krell was certainly that way. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, over 5,000 products and, and 15,000 customers. And so, you know, that, it's a little harder to knock you off when you, uh, uh, when you have that broad of a product base and that uh, number of markets that we serve. I think I was in almost every market, by the way, that, that there is in semiconductors. So it sounds like you're leaning more toward the higher volume. Is that accurate or am I well, mis- Not high. Mis- so high volume in the sense of the word of, of – of um, uh, number of products, but if you talk about one product, like Intel uh, has, uh, you know, I mean, their their uh, data book would be a fraction of the size of, of mine. I mean, even though Intel is was a hundred times bigger than we were, uh, you know, they had a very small product line, but they owned that market and still do. Uh, so they were able to survive by virtue of, of being a dominant. Supplier and, and able to keep the competitors at bay. Their their closest competitor was AMD, and we know that AMD has tried for what 30, 40 years to try to to best uh, Intel and haven't been able to do it. And uh, but Intel has 70, 80 percent of the market. So if you are a, 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 a supplier and you can dominate your market, then it doesn't matter. You mean as long as your market still remains uh, strong. So uh, Intel has tried in, uh, from various times to diversify their product line. They made watches once upon a time, and, and uh, they got into uh, optical uh, you know, technologies uh, and, and you know, other gateways uh, to bolster their, uh, their product line, uh, but they, haven't, they weren't able to do it very successfully. I think they just acquired Altera, I think, yep. uh, and uh, and then that they acquired another company that made uh, you know power management chips. Uh, so Intel has tried from time to time to to diversify, but 
hasn't been really, really very successful at doing that. Very good. Okay. Well, that's great experience to be able to fall back on. All right. Well, that'll wrap up this week's chat, and uh, I will speak to you next week. Thank you very much, Ray. Well, thank you, Rich. Good talk to you again. Uh, have a good week. You the same.